So it's official. I finally got around to watching The Man in the High Castle Season 2, or I have started the season rather, and I will now be giving my review for the first episode, The Tiger's Cave, Season 2, Episode 1 of the, you know, alternate history drama, um, The Man in the High Castle. So, this episode opens up in a very compelling manner as we see Thomas, John's kid, going to school, and basically... Um, instead of saying the Pledge of Allegiance, they say the Pledge to Hitler, and so it's this very disturbing way to start this season. It's a very um, unique way, and really, the Man in the High Castle thrives on that whole aspect of getting you to think, oh man, that's insane, that's terrible, um, this world is an awful place to live, and that was one of those moments, you know, of course, because if you're an American watching the show, you've been raised, you know, have this hatred towards Hitler, Hitler and this hatred towards everything of that era, and so to see um, what would have been American children basically saying the Pledge of Allegiance to Hitler, or it's not even the Pledge of Allegiance, but the Pledge to Hitler is a very disturbing thing in a very compelling way to bring the viewer into the episode, so I thought that was phenomenal. Um, but how I'm going to be reviewing this episode is I'm not going to be talking about the different plot threads because there's way too many. I'm going to be talking about what each main character did. Because I feel like if I do the, do, um, the recap this way, then it'll be easier to understand. So, um, let's first talk about John Smith. John Smith, of course, the SS, head of the F, uh, Nazi SS in, um, in America. And he returns home to his wife, of course, after that general tried to betray him and betray Hitler last season. And he has an emotional and powerful discussion with her. Um, I can't remember the words exactly, but it was definitely an emotional and powerful discussion, and it really um, sucked you in. You know, John Smith is a character. Sometimes you hate him, sometimes you love him, because he does these awful things, but he does it for his family. Or he, he believes what he's doing is right, so it's very interesting and he's a very compelling person. Um, he, uh, later in the episode, travels to Berlin and meets with Hitler, so you actually get to see Hitler on screen more. And John is given a new task by the Fuhrer. Basically, Hitler wants him to find the man in the high castle at all cost, and Hitler is freaking out over this, and um, he gives Hitler the tape, of course, and Hitler watches um, the uh, city being bombed with a nuclear uh, uh, bomb, uh, like Juliana had seen on the t film, the Grasshopper film last season, and he's freaking out, and there's this whole scene where he's throwing things in his room. He's ba basically very disturbed, so he really wants John to find the tape, so that'll probably be John's arc this season, John trying to hunt down the different grass, um, grasshopper tapes and find eventually, he doesn't even care about the tapes anymore, he cares more about finding the man in the high castle. So Frank, um, let's talk about him. So basically last season we left him, his friend had tried to, had turned himself in uh, to save Frank because Frank had tried to kill the count, crown prince. And so he tries to convince in the beginning of uh, scene with Frank that Inspector Keto that he was not he he was the one who killed the crown prince and it wasn't his friend but he doesn't listen to him so what does he do well um he goes and he t has a discussion heated conversation with juliana's father which is very well done as well um and uh he's sort of unhinged and he she, he says you need to find somebody who's connected so he goes back and finds robert basically or arnold the collector um who he had helped you know who had helped him make the money to escape with Juliana in the previous season, when he made that whole fake Seahawks uh, medal. And he basically tells Robert, hey, I used your bullets to try to kill the crown prince, so we need to work together to get out of the situation. Of course, Robert's mad, and obviously he's mad. Um, but they come up with this plan. They're, they're going to go see one of their old clients and try to get them to defend um, Frank's friend in court, whom I can't remember the name of currently. But... Um, they do that, and basically, um, they try to convince this Kushido guy to help them out, but in the end, he's not listening, so Frank tells him that they didn't, um, that they forged this metal, that it wasn't legit, and of course, Arnold's freaking out, uh, because they could be penalized with death, but, um, Frank really wanted to grab his attention, but it cuts off right there, we don't get to see what happens until episode two, so it sort of was a cliffhanger. Um, that, that whole entire plot line with Frank and Arnold was a cliffhanger, and that was a very good cliffhanger, and really sinks you in and makes you want to watch the second episode. Um, as far as Joe, of course, he's on the fishing boat with the tape at the beginning of the episode, and these fishermen try to kill him and sell the tape at the Resistance. Well, he tells him, them, that they, he can get a better deal. 
So the Nazis drop off all this again and pick them up. But there's a bomb in the, um, basically in the money crate. And all of these fishermen who John tried to help out blow up. And he basically has this discussion with Joe. And Joe has this conversation with John where he basically tells him that, hey, I want out. I do not want to work as an SS undercover operative anymore. And John lets him walk. But as we know, John will come into the picture later this season, as we've seen in the commercials and such. Um, but as of now, um, Joe, excuse me, rather Joe wants to leave. But as of now, Joe is has left the SS and John let him. Um, so as far as Tagami, he keeps having those visions of the alternate reality, of course, which is our reality where America won the war. Um, he doesn't think Japan nuking um, the Nazis is the correct plan or correct course of action. He discusses that with Kiddo. And he makes a strange phone call at the end of the episode to this woman, basically says, um, I'm thankful for your son or whatever, but her son ends up being dead. And I didn't quite understand that scene. Maybe it'll be explained later on. Um, but he does do that. And it's a very odd scene, very weird scene. Uh, and Juliana is really the main focus of this episode. So Juliana, she gets to meet the man in the high castle, and so do we. And his name is Abinson. Abinson. And basically she meets him, and Abinson uh, basically tells her, what did you see on the tape? She recalls it all, but she can't remember the name of this one man. And Abinson says, you need to figure out who this guy is, because in the one tape where the city doesn't get nuked, um, we find this guy. Um, so basically she's, uh, they took her out because Abinson said, I don't want her anymore because she, he could, she couldn't identify who that man was. And Gary, the resistance fighter is talking to his, uh, you know, fellow resistance fighters and Juliana's in the trunk and he says, we're going to need to kill her. I don't care what Abinson says. And she basically burst forth from the trunk and there's these, um, Kimpei Tai soldiers. And the resistance fighters get in a firefight one of the, um, with, with the Kenpei Tai, and one of the resistance fighters dies. But Juliana escapes, and now she's bleeding out in the woods, basically, behind a tree at the end of the episode. But she is safe, and so we don't really know what her fate's going to be, um, of course, until the next episode. So, um, that's basically what all the different characters did this episode, uh, the Tiger's Cave. So, um, as far as the score, all the storylines were phenomenal. Um, the action was there more so in this episode than I think a lot of the last season, which wasn't bad because, you know, it had compelling drama, but I did want to see a little bit more action this season. It's nice that the episode opened up with, of course, that firefight and with the ship blowing up. Um, that was phenomenal. But the thing that bugged me about this episode is the, the Tiger's Cave season two, episode one had less cohesiveness, um, than season one all the episodes in season one, and I can already tell that this season's going to be less focused, and that kind of bugs me in a way, but at the same time, if all the stories are fine, I'll be okay with it, and Tagami's phone call was confusing to me, it may have not been confusing to everybody, it was confusing to me, um, but as far as the final score, I'd have to give this uh, episode, The Tiger's Cave, season two, episode one, of The Man in High Castle, a 8.3 out of 10, what what rat excuse me rather an 8.7 out of 10 i hope you enjoyed this review and recap of the man high castle season 2 episode 1 the tiger's cave remember to like and subscribe for more reviews this has been jonesy from jonesy tv signing off